New Zealand. We are known all over the world for our clean, green reputation. Many different travel websites have put us in the top three for most beautiful countries in the world. We have green forests, blue oceans, rolling hills and towering mountains. But there is always a flip side. New Zealand's top two exports are dairy products and meat. This is followed by wood. We are the third largest exporter of logs in the world after Russia and the United States. In 2012, we exported forestry products worth almost $4.5 billion. The Port of Tauranga is by far the largest exporter of logs in New Zealand. In order to pass international biosecurity regulations, our logs need to be fumigated. This is so any insects or parasites hiding in the wood are killed so they do not repopulate or spread disease in the countries we export to. One chemical used to fumigate logs is methyl bromide. Methyl bromide is a compound of hydrogen, carbon and bromide and is a common fumigation gas. However, this gas is extremely dangerous. If inhaled, symptoms of methyl bromide poisoning can include headaches, dizziness, confusion, rapid heart rate, fluid in the lungs, seizures, comas and death. Because of these dangers, numerous ports around New Zealand and the world no longer use it. In March 2010, the European Parliament banned the use of methyl bromide in the EU due to health and environmental reasons. Port Nelson, in the South Island, discontinued the use of the gas because it was suspected to have caused the deaths of up to six people who contracted motor neuron disease between 2002 and 2005. Motor neuron disease is a neurological condition that causes the slow deterioration of specialized nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. It is no known cause and is always fatal. The Port of Tauranga still uses methyl bromide and despite numerous protests will continue to use it regardless of the health risks. When our port fumigates their logs, their method of containing the gas is by using a tarpaulin. A significant flaw in this method is that methyl bromide is three times heavier than air, so some of the gas may escape underneath the tarpaulins every time the logs are fumigated. The Port of Auckland uses methyl bromide as well, and recently decided to recapture all of the excess gas used to turn into a salt, which can be easily disposed of. Our port simply lets it waft into the air. It should be noted, however, that the volume of logs going through the Port of Auckland is only a fraction of what Tauranga handles, so it probably wouldn't be a viable option here. Tauranga is the fifth largest urban area in New Zealand, with a population of over 134,000 people. If released into the soil, methyl bromide can travel very quickly. If this methyl bromide gas is escaping, could it potentially be wafting through the city? And if it is, is there any way for us to know if we're being exposed? Methyl bromide is colourless, odourless and tasteless under normal circumstances, so nobody would realise they were in danger until it was too late. There are rules and regulations when it comes to the people working with the gas, and workers at the port are blood tested regularly, but if a lot of gas does escape, there is nothing really to protect the innocent bystander. According to a Sun Live article posted on the 1st of June 2017, Maritime Union New Zealand members working in the port, despite being told they were out of range and in no danger of the gas, described coughing, lightheadedness and nasal congestion during gas release. Green Party pesticide and biosecurity spokesperson Stephen Browning is also against the fumigant and said that Methyl bromide, if inhaled, can have long-term impacts on the brain, increase the risk of cancers and neurological issues. We shouldn't be exposing anyone to this stuff. Another thing to consider is that methyl bromide is extremely destructive to the ozone layer. Chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, are the main contributors to holes in the ozone layer. Methyl bromide is 60 times more destructive. The ozone layer is Earth's natural sunscreen, and without it we would be exposed to massive amounts of UV radiation, causing extreme sunburn to occur very quickly, skin cancer rates to fly upwards, and maybe even having our DNA altered. So if methyl bromide is such a dangerous chemical, 
Why are we using it? There are many other ways to fumigate logs. One of these is phosphine, another gas. A disadvantage to phosphine, however, when compared to methyl bromide, is the exposure time needed, which is up to 10 days. Another alternative is sulfuryl fluoride. Unfortunately, it is not extremely effective at lower temperatures, so needs high dosages to compensate for that. Other chemicals, such as cyanogen, methyl iodide, and even a methyl isothocyanate and sulfuryl fluoride mixture are currently being tested to replace methyl bromide. Other non-chemical alternatives, such as heat treatment, debarking, soaking, and microwave treatment could potentially be used as well. So if these alternatives are available, why does the Port of Tarama still use methyl bromide? Well, to answer this question, I think we need to look at the bigger picture here. The Port of Taranga are not wholly responsible for the fumigation of the logs. The main fumigation company, Genera, is. Our port is merely a distributor, giving companies like Genera a place to fumigate. I received intel from numerous sources inside the company that have said that Genera is working very hard on finding an alternative to methyl bromide and are hoping to have something in place by 2020. Unfortunately, finding an alternative isn't as easy as you would expect. Firstly, they would need to find a fumigate that is as cost effective as methyl bromide and at the same time be less harmful to peatful and the environment. Afterwards, they would need consent to actually use the alternative. And then comes the most difficult part. They would need to convince the countries we export to, mainly China, to allow the alternative to be used as fumigation. Right now, China will only accept logs fumigated with methyl bromide, and since we export about 90% of our logs to China, the port's hands are kind of tied. But that still doesn't change the fact that methyl bromide is extremely dangerous. The information I received from my sources also gave me a rough estimate as to how much methyl bromide the port uses annually. The port uses about 30 to 50 tons of methyl bromide per ship. Multiply that by the two or three ships that enter the port every day, and you do the math. It doesn't take long to realise a lot of this gas is being used in our hometown every year. It is very interesting to note that China does not want to fumigate the logs on their shores. Why is this? Is it perhaps because they are well aware of the toxicity and associated health risks methyl bromide poses? It seems to me that the bigger country is making us do the dirty work while they sit there and watch us poison ourselves. So who is ultimately to blame here? Is it the port who allow it? Is it Genera who use it? Or is it China who demand it? What price do you put on the health and well-being of our people and the environment we live in? I'll leave that up to you.